If you are still collecting hard copies of your receipts in plastic bags like this, then this video is for you. Because today we are talking about digital receipt and document storage solutions. On top of that, we'll try to improve your record keeping habits. And let's be honest, most of us suck at it. Roman does consumer tips. Did you ever wish to be able to search your documents and receipts, hard copies, the same way you do it on a computer? Well, today I am presenting you with three solutions to do exactly that. Because finding those warranty receipts is always pain in the back, at least for me. And no, we will not be looking at one of these today, because to be honest, this is the wrong way to do it. These scanners are not that good for a day-to-day -day home use, and they're specifically designed to be useful on the go. At home instead, you want to go for something slightly better. Let me tell you about my selection process. First of all, your next scanner has to be made by a major brand. The reason is, once in a while you have to do maintenance on your scanners, and if the brand is one of those come-and-go ones, chances are you will run out of parts pretty soon. Don't know about you, but in my case, I want my scanner to last me for at least five years. My second parameter was functionality. The scanner has to be able to scan from tiniest to the largest pieces of paper. Additionally, it has to give me a selection of where I want to save it, whether it's my computer, cloud, or maybe both. And it has to do it straight from the scanner's front panel. And if it can recognize handwriting, that would be a big fat plus. And with all of that in mind, it still has to be very easy to operate, should be easy to move around, and easy to store it regardless of how frequently you use it. That's why it has to be wireless so that you can put it anywhere in your office, home office, or around your house. This is why price was the last check mark on my list. I quickly realized that machines with similar features cost about the same. So I selected machines in the range plus minus 400 US dollars. Let me warn you, these are not the cheapest budget versions, but they come packed with features you never knew you wanted from your scanner. This is where I present to you free top selling on Amazon receipt and document scanners. Let me introduce you. Raven Original Scanner. Raven is somewhat a new kid on the block, has a few tricks up its sleeve, and it even has this Raven Jester, who works hard at cracking fresh jokes every time you look at the screen. Next is Epson RR600W, where W stands for white. It's advertised as it can do it all, but in reality, I had some challenges straight out of the box during the setup process. Some of those features advertised were not easily achievable as I wanted them to be. And last but not least is Fujitsu ScanSnap iX1600. The most compact scanner I've ever seen, honestly. It makes it easy to put it away if you're not a frequent user. It has plenty of features, user-friendly interface, and of course some downside same as all of the scanners today. If this is the first time we meet, my name is Roman, nice to meet you. Before we proceed further into reviews, I wanted to tell you that I'm filming most of my videos on a cell phone. And currently I'm trying to save some money to buy a proper video camera to improve my visuals, as you are watching it today, as I managed to borrow a couple of cameras from friends. However, even the most budget-friendly cameras would cost me, with lenses and everything, in a range of $2,000. This is where I am asking for your support to chip in. And there are three easy ways to do it. First is by clicking Super Thanks button right under this video, where you can simply donate a small amount of money that will be highly appreciated. And bear in mind, a single dollar you donate will do way more good than you watching ads on my channel for 10 years. Just put that into perspective. Alternatively, you can click on the Buy Me Coffee link in the description. It does the same thing. Second option, is to use the referral links from the description. I will leave a referral link for each of the scanners. Once you click on it, it's free of charge for you, but these are sponsored links. And if you end up buying one of the scanners, Amazon may share with me a couple of dollars here and there. Again, at no cost to you. And last, but the most simplest way you can help me grow this channel is to hit that like and subscribe button at the bottom, especially if you enjoy the content. Again, there is no pressure of any kind. Simple like and subscribe will do just fine. Now back to the scanners. And I want to start with the most advanced one of them all. This is Raven Original Scanner. It's marketed as a standalone solution, meaning you don't need computers, you don't need anything. Because basically this is a Android tablet attached to a scanner body. However, for it to operate, it requires a consistent connection to internet. Without internet, it will 
not even power up. Well, it will, but it will not turn on. But if you have internet, well, this scanner might be all you need, ever. It's a bummer really that they had to make it rely on the internet so much, but I'll explain why they did so. Thing is, all of their processing is done in the cloud. Even if you save documents locally, that includes saving to a USB thumb drive, speaking of which, there are two of them at the back, or connected directly to your computer, which by the way doesn't work that easy. I tried to use this USB port and actually it doesn't work. I have no idea why they had to put it here. So in any case, however you try to use it, it still requires internet and it processes everything in the cloud. Yes, even if you're saving stuff to a USB thumb drive. Therefore, if you have no plans of connecting your scanner to the internet or have documents of severe confidentiality, I would think twice before buying this scanner. If this is your case, skip to the next one. Still want to give it a try? Well, let's talk more about Raven. First of all, with each purchase, Raven provides you with a unlimited cloud storage solution. Oh, and by the way, they allow setting up separate profiles to access that online storage. So if you have several employees, you can set up different roles for them to access through. That way you can control the entire mailbox by yourself and give other people ability to access the data, but not to manage it. They also claim that their cloud servers are protected and guarded 24 by 7 and that nobody will ever get access to your data and Raven will never try to monetize on it or sell it. All in-between processing between your unit and the cloud is encrypted as well. But honestly, usually the in-between process, the delivery from your unit to the cloud is a weak spot for hacking. However, you have to be some kind of high profile figure for someone to even bother with your data. Otherwise, the only threat you are risking here is when someone will eventually hack into Raven's scanners and pull all of the data that they store. And as history shows, it's just a matter of time. There are no unhackable entities, there are just the ones that haven't been hacked yet. Still, let's leave the hacking discussion for another time and instead talk about the features it offers. It has this massive display. It's very easy to use, it's very intuitive, though a bit on the slower side. Nevertheless, this was the fastest setup out of three scanners we are talking about today, and it was up and running in just minutes. I was left impressed not only with its scan quality, but also with its ability to analyze and enhance images, as well as its ability to recognize and read handwriting. Even the crappy one, like mine over here. On the physical side, however, it's a little bit bulky. And I wish they have done it in the shape of a Fujitsu scan snap. Otherwise, if it's not frequently used, it's very hard to store. With this large surface, it will just accumulate dust and dust on the scanner means you will need to do maintenance more frequently. But this applies to any scanner out there. Speaking of maintenance, let's look at the material quality. And I can tell you that it's definitely behind of what Epson and Fujitsu can offer. Just look at these internal components. Which one would you select if internal component was your the only selection criteria? It would not be Raven, if you ask me. Even look at this dirty looking plastic. It's actually the way it is. It's not dust, it's not dirt and you cannot clean it out. One last tiny concern I have with it is its ability to scan very small and large receipts like this one over here. With the long ones, it has a length limit of about 20 inches. That's approximately two letter size pages. And when it comes to small receipts, you have to fiddle around with them to make them visible to the scanner. Otherwise, it just pretends to be blind. If you're in such situation, try to position your receipt slightly off-center to the right. Honestly speaking, I think this scanner was initially made to scan larger documents quick and easy, and it does it exceptionally well. However, when it comes to receipts, I think the other two scanners do it slightly better and require less attention to adjust and realign the smallest ones. It outputs crisp-looking documents, and it even manages to touch up and even edges and corners. Handwriting recognition is a big plus as well because now you can digitally search your handwritten notes and making your PDF documents readable is a breeze. With this scanner, it's activated straight from its front panel by clicking this OCR button. That's it, there are no hoops to jump through to make your PDFs readable. And if you can turn away from its internet requirement and cloud processing, this scanner can be a good addition to your set of tools when you need to scan loads of documents and do it fast. Plus, it works well with all of the major cloud services. It can be set up with network drives, FTP, but remember, processing is still done somewhere up in the cloud. If you're ready to buy it, 
please check the link in the description to score one of these for yourself. Next on my list is something I have mixed feelings about. On one side, I like how well it's built. On the other side, it's very hard to set up with a lot of hoops to jump through before you even get it going, especially if you want to have storage done in any type of cloud or your local network location. It took me close to three hours to get it going. I'm talking about Epson RR600W, machine where my expectations didn't meet the promised easiness of use by its marketing. For example, to connect it to your network drive or your cloud services like Google Drive, you have to go to some not easily searchable Epson web link and set it up there, instead of doing it straight from the screen. Yet, you can set up multiple Google Drives on this one. This is the only unit that allows this feature, out of this free at least. This website will be also your place to set up your email account records and keep a log of your scanning transactions, in case you forgot where you scanned the last document to. To me, it looks like an afterthought, honestly, instead of a feature, because if it was a feature, it would be built straight into the scanner from the get-go. And while with Raven, I can understand why they do some things in a certain way, it's unforgivable for Epson. Still, let's look at the good features it, it provides. Same as the other two scanners, it is connected to your network, but it's only doing so to provide you a wireless experience of using your scanner. Regardless of what you're scanning, it still sends it to your computer somewhere on your network, and all of the processing is done there instead. It doesn't require any internet connection, and you can even connect directly to your computer via a cable. There is also a single USB port right at the back, and it allows you to save documents straight to a thumb drive. And processing, of course, is done locally, unlike with Raven. As a result, for this scanner to function, you have to have a computer running somewhere on your network, or while being connected to it via a cable. Physical appearance is very appealing, and it screams quality at you. It's good looking, well built. Just look at the internal components. This is like a Mercedes out of this free. This unit is easy to stow away, or keep on the desk. Very versatile design, yet if left standing for a while, it will collect dust pretty quickly on the internal components, same as with Raven. Scan quality is on par with Raven, and it can identify even the tiniest letters on a colored sheet, but not handwriting. And as you guessed, it has downside, and this comes from its user interface. It feels dated, both on the built-in screen as well as on the desktop. Too many settings to go through, and you need to become a scanner whisperer in this case to really handle this puppy. And all you wanted was to scan a couple of receipts. Then <laughs> readable scans, right. It's not that easy. You have to process your scans straight through your computer and tell it every time which scan you want to be readable. Otherwise, it will scan it and send it to your storage location of your choice, but in unreadable format. Long receipts, however, were a piece of cake for this machine. It chewed through them, same as with the small ones. No issues to report. Overall, I think this is a great machine. Yes, it requires setup and you need to experiment with all features it offers, but once up and running, it does what it promised to do, and it does it damn well. So if you wanna give Epson a try, there is a link in the description. And this brings us to the last machine we're looking at. This is Fujitsu ScanSnap iX1600, in a white color. Yes, they make it in black too. I intentionally left it till the end, as I feel like this machine is something in between Epson RR600W and Raven's original scanner, and here is why. It definitely has a better user interface than Epson, but not as good as what Raven has. It has fewer settings to tweak, and it's a bit more intuitive than Epson again, but still not as good as Raven. Same as with Epson, all documents processing is done on your computer. The scanner only scans the documents and transmits them to your machine for processing, meaning you got to have computer running at all times. Same as with Epson. And there is no USB port to connect your thumb drive to at the back which is a minus since the other two machines have it. One of the main distinctive features of the scanner is its feeder flap. It works as a cover when machine is not in use and protects it from dust and other elements. Additionally, it makes it very easy to store and move around. And every time you close it, your scanner goes to sleep. So there is a bit of energy saving as well. If you ask me, this is definitely a 10 out of 10 functional design approach. Now let's look at its scan qualities, and it's also in between the other two scanners. For some reason, ScanSnap was having a hard time scanning this colorful page and missed half of the text, which is a shame, 
as it had no such issue with black and white documents altogether. Handwriting was not recognized, of course. Small receipts were not a problem whatsoever. But the long ones, it outperformed Raven by just a bit, but was not able to finish it the same way Epson did. Internal components are also somewhere in between. It looks better built than Raven for sure, but not as good as Epson. On the other hand, less components, less maintenance. To be honest, I had the most hopes for this scanner to stay with me due to its design. Japanese do know how to pay attention to details. Even this USB port has a protective cover. Mind-blowing, because who pays attention to a USB port that much? Unfortunately, overall functionality of this unit was not matching my requirements. And as a result, this is a perfect competitor for Epson, but it struggles behind Raven for sure. If you want to try it for yourself, there's a link in the description to check it out. Oh, and by the way, do consider hitting that like and subscribe buttons below as well, especially if my content is useful for you today. Now, you will notice that I didn't go into too much of details on uh, DPI settings. If you don't know what DPI is, this is a scanning resolution per sheet, because all three machines are somewhat similar in that regard. I also didn't go into the scanning speeds, because again, all three machines are somewhat similar, and all the rest of the functions that scanner is supposed to have these three machines are somewhat similar to each other, with minor differences here and there, which would not make, in my opinion, any difference for a daily user. Now, what scanner am I keeping for myself? I decided to go with Raven, due to its ease of use, painless setup and ability to make handwriting readable. Limited online storage is definitely a big plus, but in my case, I will not be using it because I will be saving most of my data to my NAS drive or directly to my computer. And the only time when I will not be able to use my scanner is when I have no internet. This is why if the internet connection is pain point for yourself, I would choose between Fujitsu and Epson. And I would choose it like this. Do you frequently scan to different G Drive accounts or any other cloud-based services? where you have to switch between different accounts all the time? If that's the case, Epson is the scanner for you. Do you prefer easy setup and don't use scanner frequently, at least on a daily basis? Then in that case, it's not Epson, but it's Fujitsu for you. I hope my review gave you at least an idea of what scanner you need for your specific purposes. Even if you didn't like any of these three, at least now you have an idea of what you need. I think this video was a perfect example of user case where all three machines sound perfect on the paper, but in reality, they didn't perform the way I expected them to do. Because remember, it's not about the overall functions and what it can potentially do. It's all about how you will use it and how it will perform for you at the end of the day. And on this note, I wish you good luck shopping. Make sure to check out the links in the description, hit that like, subscribe buttons, and I'll see you in my next video. By the way, I had a separate video done about Raven, and you can check it out right here.